Welcome to this week's Movie Math, where clearly the race is on for the first movie to open with 100 million in three days. Captain America the Winter Soldier came awfully close, as did The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Godzilla flirted with the century mark, only to then be rebuffed. And everyone from the industry to audiences was sure that X-Men Days of Future Past would do the honors. Only lo and behold, it ended up with the lowest blockbuster debut of the year yet. What the heck is going on? Has fatigue already set in with moviegoers not even a month into the official summer movie season? Why can't Hollywood convince anyone else to go to the movies, outside of the $90 million worth of moviegoers who've clearly committed to checking out all the big offerings? With so many disappointing near misses, I decided to do some research and discovered that despite all the recent feverish predictions from the industry trades, a hundred million opening is actually pretty hard to do. In fact, the first wasn't until 2002 with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Since then, typically only two to four movies a year open above the century mark, if that. Last year, for instance, only three movies cleared the hurdle, Iron Man 3, Man of Steel, and The Hunger Games Catching Fire. So this year, while these blockbusters are clearly knocking on the Century Mark's door harder than ever before, they still have yet to be let in. And these are most of Hollywood's best prospects. That leaves only two films that can break through this year, Transformers Age of Extinction and The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Transformers is a wild card though, as some could argue the franchise has overstayed its welcome and it swapped out its leading man. That leaves only Mockingjay Part 1 as a sure bet to debut in the Century Club, a new elite group to go along with our Billion Dollar Club. But the last year that only one film opened with 100 million? 2004 with Shrek 2, so that's one reason to root for Wahlberg and company. As for X-Men Days of Future Past, I'm sure Wolverine wishes he could go back in time and lower everyone's box office expectations. Apparently, Brett Ratner has done more damage than previously thought to the franchise, and audiences still don't trust it. Even in the face of stellar reviews, fantastic word of mouth, and a tsunami of publicity. Plus, this was a holiday weekend. One has to wonder if the allegations against Brian Singer really did give audiences pause. The only possible deflection for Fox here is to blame The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Godzilla for creating moviegoer fatigue just four weeks into the summer movie season, which is a terrifying thought for all the other movies queued up for release. If Maleficent doesn't impress, we could be in for a long, cruel summer. To put some positive spin on the situation, Fox had the industry trades put their worldwide haul in the headlines, 282 million. Sure, that's a great number, but X-Men Days of Future Past opened pretty much day and date across the globe, while other movies tend to roll out a bit slower. As for the holiday weekend, Fox found no headline there, as X-Men Days of Future Past is the fifth best opening ever for Memorial Day. See X-Men The Last Stand there, above it, from 2006, with no 3D? Yikes! X-Men Apocalypse will likely still move forward, but expect new addition and box office star Channing Tatum to be asked to do a lot of heavy lifting, both in the film and publicity-wise, as well as possible other changes to be determined. What would you recommend? Elsewhere in the box office, the third time was not the charm for Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Blended opened on par with That's My Boy, Sandler's two lowest debuts outside of his art house work since Little Nicky. At least this flaming turd was over on Warner Brothers' doorstep, far away from Sony, where Sandler does most of his business, like Pixels, set for May next year. In that video game action comedy, while Sandler re-teams with Kevin James, surely he's hoping New Blood Josh Gad from Frozen and Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones will bolster interest. But then again, fan favorite Dinklage didn't do much to help X-Men Days of Future Past, did he? And do we finally have a clearer picture on Godzilla? A 66% drop in its second weekend isn't great, putting it in the same category as Green Lantern, Watchmen, X-Men The Last Stand, and Hulk. But out of that group, only X-Men The Last Stand opened as big as The King of Monsters, and as we can all see, the franchise continued. Plus, Gareth Edwards has already landed his next gig, besides Godzilla 2, and that's the first Star Wars spin-off for 2016. But maybe after a 66% second week drop, Kathleen Kennedy wishes she'd kick the tires? But too late! As for Warner Brothers, they're still holding a pretty solid hand overall, as The Desolation of Smaug, The Lego Movie, 300 Rise of an Empire, and Godzilla have made it the first studio to reach a billion dollars overseas this year. However, we're already about halfway through the year, and last year Warner Brothers pulled in a little over three billion overseas. Horrible Bosses 2 and the final Hobbit flick are their only real powerhouses left for 2014. So will they be able to lead the box office once again, or will their nemesis Disney take the lead this time? 
Speaking of Disney, foreign box offices propelled Frozen to even greater heights, now past Iron Man 3 to become the biggest movie worldwide for 2013. That also means of all time, it's now at number 5, behind only Avatar, Titanic, The Avengers, and the final Harry Potter movie. And specifically, it's Asia that put it there. Frozen has amassed an astounding 818 million overseas to date, with the biggest chunks coming from Asia. More evidence that the region truly is the new global box office powerhouse. 48 million in China, 76 million in South Korea, and 193 million in Japan. In fact, Elsa has practically built a castle at the top of the Japanese box office, holding the number one spot for 11 weeks in a row since its debut in March. It is the fourth highest grossing film of all time in Japan, period, behind Titanic, Spirited Away, and the first Harry Potter. As for this coming weekend, Angelina Jolie is poised for the biggest live-action debut of her career. Yet could Disney really be happy with that number considering it's below both Alice and Oz? Meanwhile, live-action Seth MacFarlane is expected to bring in about half the debut of motion capture Seth MacFarlane. And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.